Greetings. I want to ask a very important question. And the question is, where are the William Branham followers to prove me wrong when I say that the Bible addresses the human mind and must be interpreted psychologically? For the Bible is not literal, neither is it secular history. And that the Bible was written symbolically and it has no reference to anyone who existed thousands of years ago or to any actual event that would have taken place on earth thousands of years ago. From the beginning to the ending of the Bible, it's all a great psychological jammer and it all have to do with the human psyche. For as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. For it is your own thoughts that is creating your reality and creating your personality. Therefore, my brother, my sisters, everything begins inwardly. And a word is a thought expressed. Therefore, if you respond to me, you prove me right. When I say that the Bible has to first be mental or psychological, because your words is the expression of a thought, which means it has to be mental, it has to first be psychological. If you ignore me, it's the same thing. You're proving me right. When I say that the Bible is psychological and that the Bible is a book of mind science. So all the brothers and sisters in the Third Exodus Assembly in Trinidad and Tobago and in St. Vincent and the Grenadines and the rest of the fathers of William Branham all around the world, what they've been doing for many years, they've been taking personification for persons. And they've been taking other glory for history. For example, Galatians 4.24 tells us that the story of Abraham is an other glory. Check out the meaning of the word other glory. And also, when you look more deeply, you would realize that no book in this world could ever be written. That wasn't for us a thought, or for us an idea, or for us imagine, or for us psychological. Also, there is no Christian in this world who will ever walk in literal water. I ever turn literal water into wine. I ever call anyone from the dead. Don't make nobody fool you when they tell you about William Branham brought back a little boy alive and all of those kind of things. Why couldn't he go and call someone from the grave who would have died at least say, three to four days ago? The, 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 the Bible tells you that in, um, I think it's in John 11, I think some, somewhere, somewhere there, calling for Lazarus from the grave. But when you really understand that esoterically, you would know what it really means to call for Lazarus from the grave when you could create your reality consciously. Then you will understand what that really means. <laughs> I don't want to go into that mystery right now. And also, if the Bible was literal and secular history, why it is said that it's a mystery? Why it said that marriage is a great mystery? Why the Bible keep telling you that it's all about mysteries? And then, why is it in Revelation it tell you, here is the mind that have wisdom to count the number? <laughs> I don't even want to go into those kind of things. Because the book is about wisdom and folly. It's about the, the foolish and the wise. Now, if you ask anyone who believes in secular Christianity, including the followers of William Branham, who is God, they say, of course, God is the creator. God is the Lord and Savior. Now, how do you know God is the creator? The only way we can know that God is the creator is by you discovering that there's a creative power in you and you must be able to use that creative power and create your reality consciously. Which means you should be able to create money. Which means you have the power to live in poverty and prosperity. And then you approve Deuteronomy 28 that says you shall be above and not beneath. You shall be the head and not the tail. You shall be the lend and not the borrower. And that is just to show you if you're actually walking with the law. So that's just a law. And everyone is using that law. 
whether consciously or unconsciously. So many people are creating unconsciously and there are those who are creating consciously. Therefore, you don't use material things to measure your spirituality. But this is what I will say to you. If someone comes to me and they say they do not have a job, are they out of money? I can take that Bible and show them that Bible psychologically, esoterically, metaphysically and show them what to do practically and prove what I'm saying. Because they will prove the prophecy. I will teach them how to prophesy in their very life. <laughs> and that's how you test a prophet. A true prophet and a, a past prophet. A true prophet will always teach you how to find your prophetic self. And you will never be broke another day in your life. And I'm not just talking about financial, um, being broke financially. Eh? I'm talking about being whole in every area of your life. Because you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. And that's why I keep asking the question, where are the followers of William Branham to prove me wrong? Uh, where are the Christians, any part of the world to prove me wrong? When I say that the Bible is a book of mind science. That it's all about the human psyche. There's nothing literal. If it was literal, why can't a Christian turn water into wine or walk on water? And you can never change the law of reproduction. Look around you. You see all the trees and all the animals that they always bring back after their own kind. The law of reproduction that every species and every seed must and will always reproduce after its own kind. If the life of Jesus in, is in you and Jesus was a literal man 2,000 years ago and he's now inside of you as the Holy Spirit and you claim you have the Holy Spirit and you have the Holy Ghost and Jesus used to create in a way that he used to solve everybody's problem. Why are you not solving the other people's problem? But how can I teach people how to solve those, those same problems using the Bible? And you can't do it. And then people say that the devil cannot create. But God can create. Because people fail to realize that God and the devil is the same person. Because you see, they never read Deuteronomy 32 39. They never read Isaiah chapter 45, verses 5 to 7. They never read Amos 3 and 6. They do not realize that God is who create both good and evil because they do not know that God in man is man's imagination. That's God. They are not a God. That's why you're told in St. John 1 and 3 that all things were made by him. And we thought him was not anything made that was made. That him is not a man 2,000 years ago. That him is a personification that represents the human imagination. Teaching you that everything that was made and are ever going to be made, it must first be imagined. Don't you know money was first imagined? Even there, they really know money was first imagined. Money was first a thought. And it's just an expression of a thought. Money is just an expression of a thought. And that earning money is an energy game. And we came here to manipulate energy, which is alchemy. And to live as an alchemist. <laughs> he would have sell himself for 28 million. Because he would know that money is not real. This whole world is an illusionary world. And the real you is within. And expresses himself on the outside. Therefore, your real economy is inwardly. Not an outside economy. Listen to all the messages I've been preaching down the years. You're always talking about the outside economy. But with recession and talking about the governments of the world and so on. There's no prophecy or anything that's in the Bible that people refer to prophecy. That is not the expression of a thought. It all has to do with people's mentality. No war. If you think about physical war, no physical war could be found. And the, the, the war was for psychological. Bombs and guns are expression of thought. Because thoughts become things. You see? See, but most people do not know about how to manipulate energy. They do not know how to create consciously. I remember when I saw attend the Thorax Assembly, Pastor for the for the Thorax Assembly in St. Vincent told me one time that Benny he and all of these, you know, televangelists just work with the law. And he started to use the law. I know the law. But I've gone beyond the law and come into the promise because everyone is actually using the, using the law. 
They are creating consciously and unconsciously. So sometimes Christians look at you and they look at to see what you're gonna flam materialistically, eh? To prove what you say. <laughs> the greatest power is when I could uplift someone and put them in a place of affluence. That's this right there in, in, in Acts chapter 3. The man who was sick financially and he couldn't stand on his two feet financially. And love and faith, which is Peter and John. <laughs> Who would have found the nine power? <laughs> and how to fulfill your every desire. They say, you know, silver and gold have I none, man. That's a jam I've been playing out. That's a secret. That was no historical event. Say, rise up and walk, man. You, you could put someone in a place of affluence and have them to stand on their feet financially. This is power, my brother. And with great power, come on. Great responsibility. You see, these people going and say how oh, the church have to close now because of the bride and all these so-called churches and denominations have to close. All of them. Because they are government institutions. The only thing the government can control is this church, this temple. Because why? No one could have a thought for you. Only you could have a thought for yourself. That's why you have to control your mind. And you have to be the Lord and master of your destiny and learn to create your reality consciously. So I, no, 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 no government jurisdiction could change your reality. Thought Exodus Assembly and all of the churches all around the world that, that the government had to uh, uh, um, exercise their authority over them. It's just to show how fast they are. And, 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 and Thought Exodus Assembly, they always just say, oh, they're not a denomination. We be. Your organized dead denomination, of course. The only thing that cannot be that um ca cannot be denominated is your self knowledge, the knowledge of self, knowing exactly who you are and discovering the truth that is within you. Only when you discover that the kingdom of God is within you, then you will get rid of all, all secular Christianity, and you never believe in a God outwardly. There's no entity outside of yourself that is greater than you. No, 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 that's not true. I am the way, the truth, and the life. You can never say I am and not referring to yourself. That the name of God from generation to generation, that's your memorial. That's the universal question of life. Who am I? And when the answer comes, you have to be I am. I am that I am. I am whatever I believe myself to be. For as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So, you see, religions, most of these religions, they've been set up for you not to know your authority, for you not to know your power, for you not to know who you are. It's to keep people control. Because there's only one fundamental sin in this world, and the only fundamental sin in this world is not knowing who you are. Because you're born here in a state of forgetfulness, a, a state of amnesia. So God, the intelligence, the, the, the energy, because God is energy. God is not any, any man or any woman or any being or any entity in the sky. Became flesh through death. So amnesia is the, is the sleep of death. So it's a sleep and it's a death. So God died. To have this human experience. So when you talk about the crucifixion and dying on the cross, it's look at right here, man. This body right here. And you're crucifying the Christ power between two thieves and this cross. Your imagination. You're crucifying it every day. And the two thieves who are who, 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 who want to have you in the middle. Is a politician and a preacher. One promising you a good life while you're here and one promising you the good life after you leave here. But I'm saying your good life is here. Take back your power. Your infinite power. So, you know, my brother and my sister can go on and on, but I just, you know, want to show you, you know, why the fathers of William Branham, they cannot prove me wrong. And where are they to come out and prove me wrong? Anything you say I do, you're just playing this kind of game. Because why? You do not know how to play the game. You don't know this life is a game. 
And I don't know how to play the game. I get played by the game. So let me say, if, 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 if this is the first time that you're listening to me and what I'm saying makes sense to you. And if you was a person who was trapped in Christianity, I was trapped in the message of William Branham. And you want to prove what I am saying. I want to say to you, this doesn't base on belief. I'm going to give you things to do practically and let you prove it for your own self. Then you will prove yourself that imagination creates reality. You prove for yourself that the Savior is within you, that the Creator is within you, that the Lord and Master is within you, and that you've been searching all your life for yourself. And whenever you find God, you find yourself. Whenever you find yourself, you will find God. And you're hearing this truth coming from a man who has experienced the virgin birth, which is a birth from right here, a birth from the skull, birth from above, that you become one like with the wind, you become invisible. And tell the story to your brothers and sisters, which kind of virgin birth 2,000 years ago. No woman ever spread she like an open vagina and some sun come out. Never happened. Who is the savior of the world? It's a lie. <laughs> it's a symbol, it's a sign. Right now I'm doing a book on it. By the end of this year, my book will be ready. The Secret Vagina Man. I break down everything. I go on in, in, in Matthew chapter 27. Show you all of that. Did you all show the Bible? Don't you know man could get bored? Keep quiet. Might get a fool you. But some woman named Mary. You buy that? Even the pastor say, you're the Mary. We bring more the daily word. And he's still talking about Jesus. He speak on the inspiration, but never had the experience. I'm not bragging, I'm just here because he used to always say the word will correct the error. But it's the Christ consciousness that will correct the error. The Christ in flesh is what will correct the error and cannot be proven wrong. So, it's a whole whitewash of your own ancient African spirituality that you're feasting upon when you believe in secular Christianity. And the white man keeping you in mental slavery, which, which equals stupidity. Because you do not know who you are. You do not know your power. Most people who believe in secular Christianity and even brother and followers, they do not even know their history before slavery. Go check that out first, man. Go do some research. Some of them doesn't even know when the Bible was even written in the language in which they, 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 they are reading it. And the original language of the Bible was not even a, a language that, 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 that they utter from the, from, from the lip. It was a language of symbology. So I can go on and on, but I want to you know, come to a... a, a I close here and I want to encourage anyone willing to put what I'm saying to the test of imagination creates reality. I'll show you how. If you want, if you want mentoring, I can mentor you. You know, I, 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 I mentor people. I have books. You can check them out. You know, always be open-minded and remember knowledge is power. Empower yourself. So if you're listening to me and you, 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 you're a message believer, you, you know, Challenge me, man. And tell me how you can speak to me and it's psychological, it ain't mental. It ain't for at all. Tell me that. So I think I say enough, man. So with these words of love, I send love and positive vibration to all those who would take stock of themselves and do as Second Corinthians 13 and 5 says to do. Examine yourself, man. Test yourself. See if any faith or not. Don't you know your own self? Don't you know your own self that Jesus Christ is within you? Don't you realize that the creative power is within you and that Jesus Christ is not a man 2,000 years ago? They only had Jesus to give you a white idol, but the Christ, the Christ power, which is the creative power, is within you. Speaking from experience, you know. So, I want to thank you very much for listening to me and I'm inviting you to comment, even if you you feel to oppose. Nothing is wrong with that because I will definitely help you. I am here to teach. That's what I'm here to do. I'm here to uplift and I'm here to expose all false prophets and all false teaching because this is my work. Okay, and I got to do my work. And if you're part of this journey 
and you definitely want to know that your true identity is your divinity, I'm giving you the key by telling you you have to look inwardly and forget about secular Christianity. So with that being said, I want to say peace. Love you all, my brothers and my sisters. I'm out.